in a much more better way so thank you very much for watching this tutorial and i'll see you guys in the next tutorial thank you hello and welcome to this tutorial and in this tutorial we'll be learning how you could add properties to your widgets now in the previous tutorial we have learned how you could add widgets like the simple button onto your android activity screen and we have also run the application in the emulator so what i've done is that instead of closing the emulator i have just minimized it so that it takes less time for the computer to load up and boot up the emulator once again so you could also do the same so instead of just exiting out of your emulator you could just exit out of your app and then minimize the emulator so when you are running the emulator for one more time after modifying your code so it will take a relatively shorter span of time to load up the emulator now what we are going to do in this tutorial is that we are going to define some properties for the button which we have created and also we are going to try and change the background color of our activity screen by using some java code so now in this case as we want to change the color the next thing which we want to do in the java code is that we want to import a package which is called as color so we go right ahead and we import color so to import color we type import android dot graphics dot color and that is going to import the color package for us now the next thing which we want to do is that we want to set the background color of the layout so in order to do that we go right ahead here and in order to change the layouts color we type my layout which is nothing but the name of our layout then we give a period or dot operator and then we type set background color which is a method which is used in order to set the color now in the parameter section of this what we want to do is that we want to specify the color which we want to use so let's say we want to change the background color to blue so in this we type color dot and the desired colored which we want so in this case if we want blue we type blue in capitals and it is going to change the color of the background for us now once we are done with this uh, let's say we want to change the color of the button too so we do the same with button so we type the name of button which is my button then we type dot set background color and let's say we want to set it to let's say green so we type color dot green and it is going to set the color for us now also we want to mention some text onto the button so in order to mention text we type my button dot set text so set text is basically the method which is used in order to set the text of a particular element so in this case as we want to set the text of the button we specified the button name which is my button then we have used the set text method and inside the parameters we specify the text which we want to display so in double quotes we type let's say click here now once this is done when we switch to this content mail.xml file uh, you could see that no change appears right over here but when we run the application we could notice the change and that is because when we are going to set the layout from here it is not going to usually show you changes here now the main advantage of using java for creating your interface is that you could dynamically change your interface when you are typing code in java for example if you want to change the code in xml so it is good for the applications which are static uh, that is the interface is not going to change that much but if you want to design an application wherein the layout of your application depends upon the preference of a user so in that case we are going to go with the java code so coming back to the tutorial we have set the color of the button and we have also set the text of the button now once we are done setting the color and the text of the button the next thing which we want to do is that we want to align these buttons properly so in order to do that we go ahead and type the layout's name which is relative layout so we type relative layout then we type dot layout params and this is going to be the layout parameter and this we are going to specify the widget which we want to use and then we are going to specify its layout so we type dot layout params and params stands for parameters now the next thing which we need to do is we want to mention the widget for which we are using this so let's name it as button details as we are going to set the layout for buttons so we type button details and then we type this equals again we type relative layout and then again we use the dot layout params and inside the parameters we want to set 
the actual parameters which we are going to use so basically what we are trying to achieve here is that we are going to place the button in the relative layout by using some parameters now in this case we want to use wrap content and wrap content is basically used when we want the container to wrap along our elements so basically when we are done with this we type relative layout dot layout dot layout params dot wrap content and this is going to wrap the content for us and then again we are going to type relative layout dot layout params dot wrap content and make sure that you end this with a semicolon and also make sure that as we are creating a new object of the parameters you make sure that you specify the new keyword here and as you specify new here you could see that all the errors are automatically gone now if you don't understand why we have written this line of code here uh, so basically we have written this just for the sake of adding a rule which is called as button details to our button right over here so that this button is specified in a proper location. Now what we are going to do is that we are going to add these button details and we are going to specify a proper layout for our button. So we go down here and then we type button details then we give a dot operator and then we use the add rule in order to add the layout to it. So in this case the first parameter which we want to specify is going to be the location so in order to specify the location we type the name of our layout so in this case we are using relative layout so we type relative layout dot as we want to specify it send in center so we type center horizontal and center horizontal is nothing but it is going to place the button horizontally in the center so we type center horizontal and also we want to make sure that we have placed this button in the center vertically as well so we go down here and again we add the rule so we type button details dot add rule and this line of code is going to be the same so we type relative layout dot center but in this case we are going to type in center vertical so that horizontally as well as vertically this button is aligned in the center so now once this is done the next thing which we do is that we go to the layout right here and we have specified the add view so we simply cut it from this position we go ahead and come here and we paste the code here and one more thing which we want to add to this button is going to be the button details which we have created right over here so you make sure that you go ahead here and then you type in the button details so we type button details right over here so now let's go through the code once again in order to have a proper understanding of what we have done so basically in the previous tutorial we have created objects of relative layout for specifying the layout and we have also created a button object which we are going to use now the next thing which we did is we as we wanted to set the background color of the layout we have typed my layout dot set background color and the set background color method is basically used in order to change the background color and we did the same with the my button and then finally in order to add some text to my button we have typed my button dot set text and we have specified the text here now this line of code right here is a bit confusing and that is because it is basically a rule in order to set the layout so basically we have created a rule and we have named it as button details and then as we are using the relative layout we have specified relative layout and inside the parameters of relative layout we have basically set the parameters to wrap content now wrap content is used because we want to fit the layout in such a way that it wraps the content that is it wraps the widget which are specified into it. Now the next thing which we did is that basically we want to set the position of the button in center horizontally as well as the position of the button in the center vertically. So we have specified these two lines of code here and then finally we have added this view or we have added the button along with the button details to our layout so now in order to check the output of our program we save the code and when we run it as our emulator is already running we select the running emulator and click ok so as you could see our application is up and running on the emulator and you could notice that the background color has been changed to blue and also the button color is changed to green and we could also notice that the button right here is set in the center horizontally as well as vertically 
So basically we are successful in writing Java code in order to change the background color as well as the button color and also we are successful in setting the button at the center position horizontally as well as vertically. So in this tutorial what we have learnt is that how you could use Java code in order to add properties to your widgets. So basically what we have done is that we have added the property of background color to the layout as well as we have added the property of color to the button and then finally we have added this piece of code right here which is nothing but the button details and it is used in order to basically specify the layout and we have used this right over here in order to set the align the button horizontally and vertically in the center. So that's it for this tutorial and in the next tutorial we'll be learning how you could add more widgets to your application by typing some Java code. So thank you very much for watching this tutorial and I'll see you guys in the next tutorial. Thank you. Hello and welcome to this tutorial and in this tutorial we'll be learning how we could add some more widgets to our application. Now in the previous tutorial we have already learned how you could add a button and we have already learned how you could set up the layout of the button and also how we could change the background color of the button as well as the background color of the layout. Now in this tutorial what we are going to do is that we are going to add one more widget to our layout and that widget is going to be the edit text widget which allows the user to edit some text onto our application. So in order to do that the first thing which we need to do is that we need to import the edit text. So in order to do so we go here and we type import android dot widget as it is widget it is present in the widget package. So we type android dot widget dot edit text and it is going to import the edit text for us. Now let's go ahead and create the object for edit text in a similar fashion in which we have created the object of the button right over here. So in the same fashion we go ahead and create the object for edit text. So we type edit text and let's say we name the edit text as let's say we want to uh, accept the username. So we type edit text username equals new edit text and in the parameters we are going to specify this. Now once this is done the next thing which we do is we set IDs to the edit text as well as the button. Now what happens is that whenever you want to use some of these widgets for further application we need certain IDs so that we could call them or reference them by using these IDs. So it is important that you set IDs to the button as well as the text. So we go ahead and create IDs for each of them. So let's go ahead and create the ID for the button first. So we type my button and then in order to set some ID for it we type dot set ID and the set ID method is going to set the ID up for us. So for example let's say we set this ID to let's say 1 and in case of the username we set the ID to 2. So we type the name which is username and then we type dot set id and let's name this id as 2. So what happens is that whenever we want to reference to this button or when we want to reference to this username we could simply specify this id right here so that we could get back to that. Now once this is done the next thing which we do is we want to make sure that the username has a proper layout. So in order to give the layout to the username what we do is that we simply go ahead up here and we copy this line of codes which is present here which is used in order to set the layout for buttons. So we simply copy it and as we are going to use the same method for setting up the layout we just paste it and then we replace this button details by username. So let's say the user details are the details for the username. So we type user name details. Now once we are done with this the next thing which we want to do is that we want to specify a particular position to this. So in order to do that we type username details dot add rule in order to add a certain set of rule. Now we type relative layout as this is a relative layout. Then as we want to place this above the button so we type dot above and make sure that you have a capital. So we type dot above. Now once we are done with this the next thing which we do is we specify the next parameter and that parameter is going to be the button. So we type my button dot get id which is going to get the id. Now once this is done what we want to do is that we want to align this username in the center. So in order to do that we type 
username details dot add rule and inside the rule we want to specify the relative layout so we type relative layout and now as we want to place it in center we type dot center horizontal and that is going to align this in the center horizontally now once this is done the next thing which we want to make sure that it has some specific set of margins so what happens is that as we have placed this text right above the button so basically there wouldn't be any gap in between these two so we want to make sure that we add up some margin to it now in order to add margin to this we type the text name which is username details and then we use the set margin method in order to set the margin so we type dot set margins so as you could see right here the set margin methods the parameter it is going to accept is going to be the left top right and bottom so in the first parameter you are going to specify the margin which is to be left to the left side then we have the margin which we want to leave on the top then we have the margin to the right and finally we have the margin to the bottom so as in this case as we only want to specify the margin to the bottom so what we do is that in the set margin methods the first three th parameters are going to be 0 and let's say the third parameter which we want to use is 50 so basically in the bottom most parameter we want to specify the margin of 50 pixels so we add 50 to the end of it now once this is done the next thing which we want to do is that we want to add the username onto the layout so we type my layout which is our layout name then we use the method add view in order to add this username onto the layout so we type dot add view username and the details of the username are username details now once this is done we have successfully added this onto the layout now in order to check if our application performs correctly we save the code and we run it on the emulator so as you could see our application is up and running and we have the button right here and we also have the text box over here and we could enter any text onto this text box so if you want to enter a text we simply click on it and when we click on it as you could see that the keyboard pops up and we could type any text onto this so basically we have created the text box successfully and what happens is that as you could see the size of the text box is very small so in the next tutorial what we'll be doing is that we are going to learn how you could resize this text box by using DIP which is called as the density independent pixels so basically as you could see that we have the text box we have the button and we also have the margin of 50 pixels right in between them and that is because we have used the set margins method in order to set the margins between them so in the next tutorial we'll be learning how we could increase the size of this text box by using density independent pixels so thank you very much for watching this tutorial and i'll see you guys in the next tutorial thank you hello and welcome to this tutorial and in this tutorial we'll be learning about pixels and density independent pixels so now in the previous tutorial we have created a basic simple layout which has uh, edit text and we have named the edit text as username and also we have the background which is designed by using the relative layout and we also have a button on it so basically in this tutorial what we are going to do is that we want to change the size of this edit text right over here so now one thing which you could do in order to change the size of this is you could simply go here and you could just simply type in the username which is nothing but the edit text name so we could type username and in order to set its width you could simply use the set width method so we could have typed username dot set width and it could have set the width for you but the main issue with this method is that it only accepts the parameters in the pixels value now the major problem with using pixels in your android application is that when you're running an application onto some different devices so the thing is that every device has a different number of pixels onto its screen so the thing is that the size of your widget depends upon the number of pixel your device has so for example if your device has a large number of pixels then your widget is going to look small on it so basically we want to avoid using pixels and instead of using pixels we are going to go with the density independent pixels which is also called as DIPs now DIP stands for density independent pixels and these pixels are basically used so that our app looks the similar in each and every device 
and is independent of the pixel density of that particular device. So in this tutorial, our main purpose would be to learn how we could convert the density independent pixels to pixels so that we could use the pixels in the set width method. So let's start with the tutorial. So the first thing which we need to do is that we need to import some packages. So we type import Android dot content dot res dot resources and we are going to need one more package so we type import android dot util dot typed value now if you don't understand for what purpose we have used this packages then you simply hold on you'll understand it later on so now once you have added the imports the next thing which we do is that we go right here and the next thing which we want to do is that we want to now convert the de density independent pixels to pixels so but before that we are going to need to create the resource object and the resource object is basically used in order to get the resources which are associated with our device so we type resources let's name the variable as r and we type equals get resource and this get resources method is actually used in order to get the resources which are associated with your device now the major thing which we are trying to achieve here is that we want to convert the dips to pixels so in order to do that we are going to need a set of methods and the methods which we want to use is going to be the typed value dot apply dimension so we type type value dot apply dimension and this method is going to accept three parameters the first parameter is going to be consisting of the unit which we are going to translate the next parameter is going to be the number of units which we want to translate and the third parameter is going to be the display matrix so let's go ahead and add up the first parameter so the first parameter is going to be the unit in which we want to convert so we type typed value complex unit DIP and that's what is going to be the first parameter now the next parameter is going to be the number of pixels which we want to translate so let's say 200 and the third value is going to be the resource so we type R which is nothing but the object which we have created right over here and then we use a method which is called as the get display matrix so this get display matrix method is basically going to get the display and it is going to use these three parameters in order to calculate the pixel value for us now once this is done what we do is that we want to save this result into something and this result is going to give us the actual pixel value which we want to use now in order to save it we create a variable called pixels so we type int and let's name the pixel variable as px and then we equate it to this but the main issue in this is that this variable right here is going to accept integer value so we need to use type casting over here so we type here int and it is going to translate the value into integer for us now once this line of code is done we have successfully converted the density independent pixels which are 200 density independent pixels and we have converted them into a pixel value now we could go ahead and use this pixel value in the set width method in order to set the width of this edit text right here so in order to do that we use the edit text name which is nothing but the username then we give a dot operator and then we use the set width method so we type set width and inside it we pass on the value of pixels so we type px into the parameter section and once we are done with this we simply save the code and now in order to check if our application performs correctly we run it on the emulator so as you could see our application is up and running onto the emulator and as you could see we have successfully increased the size of the edit text and as you could see we have successfully converted the density independent pixels value to the pixels value and as a result we are able to see the change in width of the edit text text box so that's it for this tutorial and in this tutorial we have learned how we could convert the density independent pixel value into the pixel value now we will also understand the basic intention of converting the density independent pixels to pixels so basically what happens is that the set width method which we have used in this application or in this tutorial is basically going to accept only the pixel values and the thing is that the problem with using the pixel value is if you use pixel values 
then your application layout is going to change from device to device and that is because different devices have different number of pixels onto their screen. Now in order to avoid that issue what we have done is that we have used the density independent pixels which are also called as DIPs. So as the name signifies DIPs or density independent pixels are independent of the density of your phone. So for example if your phone is densely populated with pixels or if it is not densely populated or it is less populated it is not going to make much difference and your layout is going to stay consistent on each and every device. So that's why we convert the density independent pixels into pixels so that we could use them and our interface stays the same on any of the device. So thank you very much for watching this tutorial and I'll see you guys in the next tutorial. Thank you. Hello and welcome to this tutorial and in this tutorial we'll be learning something about the grid layout. Now in the previous few tutorials we have learned how you could create the user interface by using Java and now in the upcoming tutorials we'll be learning about how we could create the layout using the grid layout. So basically a grid layout is nothing but it is a type of layout in which we have a number of rows and number of columns and we use these rows and columns in order to place the widgets right here. So in this tutorial what I have done is that I have opened up a new project and I have named it my application 2 or my app 2 and what I have done is that I have deleted each and every element which is present onto the screen so as to make it simple to understand the grid layout. Now once you are done with setting up your project and deleting all the elements on your layout the next thing which you want to do is that you want to add the grid layout to your interface. So in order to add the grid layout we simply go under this layouts tab and then select grid layout and we just drag this and drop it over here. So as you could see we have the grid layout which spans the entire activity or it spans the entire screen of our phone. Now let's say we want to make this grid layout to wrap around the widgets. So for wrapping this layout we use this button right here. So this thing right here is used to wrap the content of the layout horizontally. So if I click this it is going to wrap the content horizontally and this button right here is used in order to wrap content vertically. So when I click it as you could see that the grid layout is now wrapping the content horizontally and vertically and as this grid layout has no content the grid layout is spanning a small piece of area right here. So now let's go ahead and add some widgets to this layout. So the first widget we are going to add to this layout is going to be a button. So we simply select this button we go inside here and when we go inside the layout as you could see that the widget is going to be placed at row 0 and column 0. So when I drop it over here as you could see a new button pops up and now our grid layout is wrapping up the button which we have just added. Now you might also have noticed the green bars right here and here. So these are basically used in order to represent the row and column. So this bar right here is going to represent the set of columns and this bar right here is going to represent a set of rows. Now in this case we are using a combination of row and column which is 0 0. Now let's go ahead and name this button something. So we click on the button go to properties and inside the property we want to change the text property. So let's say we name this button as center. So we type center and as you could see the size of our button has changed. Now let's go ahead and add one more button to this layout. So we select the button and let's say we want to place it to the left hand side of the center button. So we go ahead here and drop it over here. So as you could see we have added the new button and now let's name this button as left as it is placed to the left. So we go here and we change the text to left. So as you could see we now have two buttons. So you could notice that one more green bar has been increased over here and that is because we have added an additional column to our layout. Now let's add one more button to this and now let's add it to the right hand side of center. So as you could see we have our new button and let's name this as right. So we change the text here to right. So now as you could see we have one row and three columns. Now let's say we want to add one more widget to the layout. So let's say we want to add one more button. So we drag the button come over here and just drop it right over here. So as you could see that one more button or one more widget has been added and we have noticed the change in the number of rows. And also you could use this green bars to entirely shift the rows. So for example if I select this and if I drag it and drop it down here you could see that the layout changes. So you could basically select an entire row or an entire column and you could just drag it 
and drop it somewhere else and one more thing which i wanted to mention is that as we are using a grid layout and it is just wrapping up the content so if we select another button and if we drop it somewhere over here so it is not going to laid on the grid layout and that is because our grid layout is only present in this area right here so in order to add a widget to a grid layout make sure that you enter inside the layout area so for example this right here is the layout area which is specified by a yellow border so if we drag a button and drop it over here it is not going to be present in our grid layout and also one more thing which i wanted to mention here is that if you want a particular button to span the entire row then you could do so by just dragging the button and dropping it like this now in this case we have increased the span now once this is done the next thing which we do is